So this is our last section of this chapter. So we don't have class Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So uh, I don't know. Sometime next week we'll have a test, probably towards the end of the week. My guess would probably be uh, probably Thursday so that we can do corrections on Friday. I don't like giving tests on Wednesday because you get five minutes less time on Wednesday. Um, that's a lot of review, but that's my that's my guess right now. Okay, so next Thursday, not this coming Thursday because we don't have classes Thursday. All right. So let's uh, let's see what we got here. Um, we're talking circles now. Now this is just a preview of what we're going to do in the next chapter. The next chapter is all circles. The whole entire chapter is about circles. You're like, how in the world can you have a whole entire chapter about circles? It's such a simple little thing. And we're even going to learn some stuff today about circles. So what possibly could be left? There's a lot, believe me. There's a lot to learn about circles. So first thing we're going to talk about is the area. Okay, we've talked about area. Was it this chapter or the last chapter? Yeah, it was this chapter was area, right? Yeah. So this chapter is area, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about area of a circle. Now, the area of a circle, I'll just put little c right there for circle. You probably already have memorized. Do you have that formula memorized, the area of a circle? Oh, uh, one, one half of the word. It's not one half. Oh, three point one four. Yeah. Three. Close. Times two? Not times two. It's area. So what are the units of area? Like if it's if I gave it to you in centimeters, what would be the units of the area of something that's measured in centimeters? Centimeters centimeter squared. Okay, so area is always going to have a squared in it. Okay, so you said three point one four, but what letter do we usually say? We usually say pi. You learned pi before, right? We'll talk about that in a minute. Times the radius. It's not just times the radius, but it's the radius squared because area always has to be squared. Now pi doesn't have any units at all. It's just a number, all right? And what do we say that number is? Right. Right. It's 3.14. Or I'll put a little squiggly equal sign. Why did I put a little squiggly? It's approximately because I used to have a banner or a poster, I guess you call it, in my room. Yeah, and it went halfway around the room. It was like 100 decimal places that pi went and that, that ripped up and got messed up years and years ago. But I used to put it in my room all the time. Now I don't have my own room. So I'm not putting anything up on the walls now. But but it used to go around, and at the very end, it would go 3.14159, blah, 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 all the way. And at the very end, it didn't just stop. What was at the very end of it? Not a squiggly. It had a squiggly at the beginning. I heard somebody say it. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, why? Why dot, dot, dot? That's right. It goes on forever. So we call this number... I don't know. Uh, yeah, we talked about this in here when we talked about the square roots. We, we call it an irrational number. You ever hear that word? You hate that word? Okay, well, rational. What's rational? <coughs> irrational means, well, look what word is in rational. Look at this. A ratio. And a ratio is basically just a what? Just a fraction, okay? So if you come out with a fraction, a fraction is going to do... One or two things. It's, well, three things. One or three. One of three things. You could have one that um, is like this: ten divided by two. That's a fraction. Do you agree? But what does it come out to be? Five. Five, and it just stops. It's just a whole number. Okay. You could have something like this: three over four, which does what? 0.75, and it stops. There's no dot dot dot. It ends right there. You with me? But it's not a whole number. Or you could have a number like this, what happens to that number? Oh, you can't see it, sorry. There you go, one third, point three three three. What do we do when we were in elementary school? Put a little bar over top of it, okay? What does that bar represent? It means it repeats, right? It just keeps on going forever and ever and ever. But it does repeat, okay? It, and it, it's, it repeats, but pi never repeats. Now, if you looked at that big old chart or you put it in your, maybe not in your calculator, but if you put it in the computer and you, you say, give me pi up to 100 decimal places, there will be a couple places where it repeats, but it doesn't just keep repeating. You might get a place where you get two fours next to each other, two sevens next to each other, something like that. But it never continues that pattern. There's no pattern to it at all. 
That's why we call it an irrational number. A rational number is like this, when you can make a fraction out of it. You cannot make a fraction. Cam, are you going to pay attention at all today? Because you're not up to this point. No, the proper response is, okay, Mr. Sorry, Henry. Right, that's the proper response because <laughs> you were not paying attention. So let's take a look. Um, what was I saying? A rational number, it, you can write as a fraction. <clears throat> Excuse me, an irrational number you cannot write as a fraction. Uh, when you're in middle school, probably, they said they gave you a fractional equivalent to pi. Do you remember that? No. I don't know. 22 oh, sevenths. Who's got a calculator on them? Put 22 over 7. <coughs> 22 divided by 7. So I'm going to put approximately 3.14. Now watch. 2857143. That's what 22 sevenths is. What if I put pi into um, my calculator? So if I put pi into my calculator, put squiggly equals. So it's 3.14, but it's 1592654. All right, but dot, dot, dot. All right. I would assume this stops at some point, 22 over 7 because it is a fraction. I'm not sure exactly where it stops, but um, pi will never stop. It just keeps on going, okay? But 22 sevens does go out a really long way. Um, as you can see, they're not exactly the same, are they? But they just, sometimes teachers will show this and use this as a decimal or a fractional um, equivalent. <laughs> so I'm not really gonna get too far into this lesson today, but I'm just, I just wanna describe this. So let's say, Say we had a circle, okay, and let's see, there we go, here's a circle, oops, cancel that, all right, uh, if I can grab it, there we go. I just, somewhere, someplace, I have a circle, uh, a cardboard circle that I drew out, okay, it's real nice and it's cut out, it's a real perfect circle, I just don't know where it is. <laughs> um, but I used to use it all the time. I always had it in my room when I taught geometry full time. But, you know, I'm teaching other stuff now too. But what I would do is I'd have a piece of string. And so I would start right here, okay? And then I'd wrap the string around the circle, okay, to right here. And then guess what I would do? I would take that string, stretch it out. I don't know. I'm just guessing, okay? So you took that string that wrapped around the circle and it went from here to here. Everybody with me on that? And so I measured, the, you know, I had a ruler, and so I would measure that piece of string. And then I'd also do this. Uh, let me draw something else in here. Uh, right there. Here's the center of the circle, okay? And then I would also measure from there to there. Okay, so what's that? This uh, is the what? The it's the diameter. Oops. Let's go. Okay, it's the diameter of the circle. So what's this right here? That long string that I. It's the. It's the, it's the circumference, right? It's the distance around the circle, but I just stretched it out straight. Okay, and so this right here would be the circumference. You with me? Yes, sir. So I can actually measure the diameter. I can actually measure the circumference. We have a formula for circumference of a circle. You could write it two ways. You could write it as in terms of, so this whole thing is the diameter, okay? Or what's this little bit right there? That's the radius of the circle, right? You've learned all that stuff in middle school, didn't you? Maybe even in algebra one, I'm not really sure. But we have, a, we have a formula for it. It's pi times the diameter. Or you could write the circumference as, what is the diameter? It's twice as big as the radius, isn't it? So, right, I could put two 
r, that's the diameter, right? And throw the pi in the middle. That's how they usually write it, 2 pi r. This is probably the most common way people write circumference. But watch this. I can actually measure the circumference and I can measure the diameter. So what could we solve for? If I could measure, if I, if I knew what the circumference was because I measured it. I knew what the diameter is because I measured it. Okay, how could I find what this variable is? Just do some algebra. Yeah, we don't know it's 3.14. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so you can't say it's 3.14 because we don't know. But what can you do? How would I get this by itself? What if this is a variable? And these are just two regular numbers because I could measure both of those numbers, right? C and D. So they would be actual numbers. So how could I get that by itself? Divide by D. That's right. Divide by D. Would you agree? Yeah. So what is pi? Pi is the circumference, what? Divided by the diameter. And if I can measure both of those, if I can measure the circumference of the circle and I can measure the diameter of the circle, guess what I'm going to get? I'm going to get pi, which is approximately, what? 3.14. And we'll just say 3.14 and stop there. Does it matter how big the circle is? I'm glad you asked. It does not matter how big the circle is. Um, I could have a little circle like this. Okay? And if I measure the circumference and I measure the diameter and then I divided, okay, the circumference divided by the diameter, I'm still going to get the same exact answer. It doesn't matter how big the circle is. I'm still going to get the same exact value <coughs> And it's going to be right there. Now, if I have a piece of cardboard and I have a string and I measure it, I'm not always going to get 3.14 exactly, okay? Just because my measuring could be off a little bit. Would you agree? And I don't really have, my ruler doesn't measure that accurately. Piece of string kind of stretches, you know, and all that kind of thing. So it may not be super accurate, but it's going to be really close. It's always, every time I do it, it's always just a little bit more than what? three. It's a little bit more than three. So if you think of it, the distance around a circle is a little bit more than three times the diameter. Everybody hear me? Okay, so just just giving a, a uh, an approximation. Okay, what if the diameter was 12 feet? Just super quick, without using a calculator, what is the circumference approximately? What did I just say? Approximately, not a calculator. Don't look at your calculator. Okay, do this completely in your head. It's approximately 36 feet around. You with me? What if the diameter was 12 miles? What's the distance around the circle that has a diameter of 12 miles? It's approximately what? 36. It's a little more. It's just a little bit more than 36. You understand what's going on here? Yeah. That's what pi is. I really wish I could do the measurements for you, but I think that explains it fairly well to you, okay? So that's how you find pi. It's always, it's called a constant because it never changes. It's not a variable. What does a variable do? It changes, it varies, right? That's why we call it a what? A variable, because it changes. This is a constant because it's always the same number all the time. Pi never changes. doesn't matter how big the circle, how, how small the circle, pi is always going to be the same thing all the time. It's always going to be a little bit more than <coughs> 3. Why do, we, why do we even use this weird number? I mean, where do we get that from, pi? Why is that a pi? Anybody know? Pi is a oh, pi is a circle. Okay, that might be a good way to think of it. But it's not, I don't think that's the reason. Where do we get that symbol that this thing, and usually it's kind of squiggly on the top, but it looks like uh, it is very good. It's a Greek letter of the alphabet, right? It's a Greek letter. Now, the more and more you do math, the more you're going to find that we use Greek letters in math. By the time I was done my college classes, I felt like I knew the whole entire Greek alphabet because we use so many different Greek letters. There's another one we're going to learn uh, tomorrow. We were supposed to learn it today, but it took a little time to go over that worksheet today. So um, we're going to learn another one, and it looks like this. I draw it like this, a circle with a little squiggly in the middle, like this. 
right? And this is also a Greek letter. We call this theta. Okay. We usually say theta. I don't know if it's theta. I don't. I've never heard anybody say theta, but I've heard some people say theta. But most people say theta. All right. So that's a Greek letter right there. And we're gonna we use that to describe an angle. So if I had an unknown angle, like from there, and then to there. Okay, everybody watching? So, help her out, please. Okay. So watch, if I had this angle right there, and it's an unknown angle, everybody look up here. Everybody look up here. I know this isn't interesting as a cute little girl walking through the door, but if I had an unknown angle, in math, almost all the time, almost all the time, we use a Greek letter, and it's called theta, and we use that for the unknown angle letter. I mean, you could use any letter. You could have called this an A or a B or anything like that. But most of the time, when you get a little bit further on in math, unknown angles are going to be theta. And we're going to have an unknown angle. I'll just show you real quick. See this angle right here? Everybody see this angle right here? Okay. That's going to be the angle that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Okay. And that's called the central angle, but we'll discuss that more tomorrow. All right. Just finish up that worksheet. Uh, that'll be due tomorrow. I'll finish up this lesson tomorrow.